Hello guys, this should give place. I'm Tita. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Today's video is an overclocking tutorial of RX 5700 XT. So as always, my overclocking tutorials are mostly, most of the parts, me showing my settings and giving some tips and advices on how to do things the best way I know. Of course, I there may be things I don't really know, but I'm explaining the things I know and the things I find the best. Yes. And well, this video isn't just about overclocking, but un uh, but overclocking and undervolting. We will be using AMD Wattman and yeah, that's mostly it. <laughs> Without any further delays, let's go to the overclocking part. Don't forget hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot. And yeah, see you in some seconds. So guys, as you may notice, I'm using different clothes because I'm recording this in the next day. Uh, but well, that's just just me explaining things. <laughs> anyway, as in my uh, as in all my overclocking tutorials on AMD cards, we will be using the AMD control panel in this case, the AMD Radeon settings uh, that are included on the AMD drivers. So if you go to the AMD website and download their drivers for your car for your card this will be included so you don't need any third-party prog programs or software like uh, msc afterburner and some others you don't need them because amd brings an overclocking uh, an overclocking tool within the drivers so for that just click on the right button of the of your mouse on the desktop and go to amd radian settings open them and now you have several tabs. You have the gaming, the video, the relief, connect, display and system. You have here the relief which is used to record, for example, the desktop for tutorials like this one, for example, for recording gameplays and etc, etc. Then you have the gaming, which is the one we want. Open the gaming and now you have the global settings and you have the games or at even the browser is here. Um, and you have them. So these are profiles, are overclocking profiles for each uh, for each game. Imagine you have a game that is that is not so demanding, and you don't really need um, a super duper overclock. In fact, you want the contrary. You want to underclock and undervolt the max you can. Then you can do it. But imagine if you have another game that you really want to and really pushes the the GPU to its limit, and you want the max the max performance you can get out, out of your GPU, then you overclock it. So you can have an undervolt and underclock profile and an overclock and overvolt or not profile. But in this case, we'll be using the global settings, which are the most common after all. Yeah. So open the global settings, ignore this, the frame rate target control. I usually play with a max of 65 FPS to have the smoothest experience possible. This, of course, in most of the games. In some games, I I just take this off, for example, CSGO and etc. But well, you want now the global Watman. Okay, open it. And here we are. Okay. Unlike the, the Vega and the RX 580, 580 cards that we've seen before, for example, the, um, on these tutorials that you are seeing here now on the screen, uh, on Vega and RX cards we had several steps, for example, uh, we had from one, yes, from step one to step seven, if I, if I stand correct, um, and well, those are the stages of several boosts, so you can control that. Here on the RX 5000 series, things are quite different. Quite different, different arc, different boosts. They now have the boost clock and the game clock, which is a bit different. Uh, game clock is usually higher than the boost clock and previous cards had only the, the boost clock. So the, the base clock and boost clock. But well, the first step you need to, to do to, um, to in fact overclock your GPU is go here and set the frequency voltage to manual instead of automatic. And well, the first thing you see if you have if you have another AMD cards, other AMD cards before this, for example, like I said, once again, the Vega or an RX 580, 570, whatever. If you had one, you know that this 
this is completely different difference <laughs> completely different from before and now we have a graph so what do we have is in fact uh, the first step the first stage and the last stage you can control the the um, the first and the last one so for example here you can just do this for example and you will and you will th this this little bar basically will make will make the the limit for example is the limit for your for your max uh, frequency so in this case the max frequency we can get now according to our overclocking profile is 2150 megahertz okay the card will boost uh, for example will will over around 50 megahertz more or less than the the advertised clocks in this case the boost clocks but this little bar controls the um, controls the boost clock most of it okay and then you have here the voltage so on this white bar just go up and down and you can select in fact the voltage you want for the max boost you are choosing it seems quite complicated but it is in fact um, it is in fact easier than it looks because on the earlier stages you had to to mess with other stages and now that you have a, a curve a, or a curve yes or a curve I don't really know how to pronounce it correctly but uh, let's say that it's a curve a curve now you have a curve curve yes a curve <laughs> now you have a curve so it will adjust automatically and you just need to to select this one for for a really stable profile so the best profile I found the best the best frequency and voltage I found for a pretty good boost and pretty good power consumption heat output and yeah like I said power draw power consumption is in fact 2000 megahertz okay choosing 2000 megahertz will make the card boost to around 9050 megahertz so 1950 megahertz it will boost around that if you want for example the card to boost around 2000 megahertz you need to select 2015 this is like an improved Vega architecture so yeah in fact it is quite an improved Vega architecture so it has the, the boost clock so the, the clocks you insert on the global Watman aren't in fact the clocks you will have stable like I said before it will have um, a little jumps uh, for example in between 50 20 to 15 20 to 50 sorry megahertz so imagine in this case uh, that the, the 20 20 50 megahertz will have for example from 90 80 to 20 30 megahertz yes yes it's quite strange but um, the performance is there and that's what matters so 2000 megahertz yep and as for the voltage let's go down my safe voltage for this boost is okay let's go down is 11 yes 1104 so 1 volt 104 millivolts and that's it that's not much more to say so these are my settings uh, with these settings the the card pushes around let's say one from 160 to 200 watts max my Vega 56 is a lot slower than this card and it pushes around 200 or 220 watts depending on the game and resolution and this card overs from 160 to 200 max in general 160 or 180 watts max depending on the resolution in some really really heavy GPU heavy games it may go to around 200 watts but in general from 160 to 180 watts and for this kind of performance it is indeed a massive massive upgrade from Vega cards okay this is for the for the GPU frequency you won't have much problems using these settings I'm, I'm pretty sure you won't um, okay now let's go to the VRAM VRAM is also very very important okay uh, in this case we need to select also okay my bad we need to select also here it's here on the bottom you have to select manual manual because if you don't select manual you can't manually adjust things <laughs> and well you have to select the um, 
the manual mode and the GPU comes with the stock frequency, at least mine, um, for the VRAM, GDDR, not 5, GDDR6, um, and comes with a stock frequency of 875 MHz. Okay, my GDDR, I'm saying again GDDR5, Jesus, my GDDR6 can go up to 940. After 940 megahertz, it will start having glitches and most probably will restart after some minutes. But 9, 940 is completely stable. I used HW Info 64 to see the VRAM errors uh, while gaming and like I said, zero, completely zero errors, okay? But the frequency I advise for most users, because most users don't know much about overclocking, uh, is 930. 930 are, is the, um, the quite is the mid term that almost all all GDDR5 GPUs, in this case the RX 5700 graphics, uh, will make. So almost any single GPU like RX 5700 or 5700 XT will go and overclock without any problems to 930 megahertz on the VRAM. Okay. Another very, 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 very important thing is the power limit. So we've done this all, but if you don't put the power limits up to the max, or at least let's say 30%, but whatever, put it to the max. If you don't put the power limit to the max, your GPU may not boost um, to the levels you want. So, this power limit doesn't mean that the GPU will use 50% more power. It doesn't mean that, obviously. It means, though, that the GPU will use up, will use up to 50% more power if it needs to. If. So, for example, if you are doing an extreme overclocking or if you want the card to boost to its max possible, then you want the power limit, so... Uh, the, the card knows that it can use 50% more power than it is written on BIOS, okay? That's it. Um, and well, if even at stock settings, if you just come here and put the power limit to the max, your card will boost a bit more and you'll have a bit higher performance. But most of all, the performance, the, the bigger performance improve is on the VRAM, so 930 from, eight, from 875 megahertz to 930 or 940 is a big is a big performance gain. In fact, in fact, in most games it is a big performance gain. And well, that's it, guys. There's not really much more to say. Let's put it on full screen. Uh, there's not much more to say because uh, the overclocking on these cards is quite different. Um, I've never seen, in fact, um, a graphic like this one, but well, from after like, let's say, one or two days, I guess it is pretty, pretty easy to overclock on these cards. They come already with a boost, a really, really high boost, but what we do here is not about the boost, it's more about the voltage. So, we can reduce the voltage, for example, the stock voltage, the stock voltage is 1.2, Okay, and we are now using 1.1 and this will indeed reduce a lot the power draw, will reduce a lot the heat and uh, the performance, the performance that you will lose, I'll test, I'll test it and for, I tested it, yeah, in fact, and for example on Assassin's Creed I lost 1 FPS from like 70 to 69, <laughs> funny number, 69 and so 1, 2 FPS at max and I have around... 30 to 40 watts less power draw, uh, no coil wine, nothing. So, for me, it is pretty, pretty damn worth. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. Sorry for talking that much, I tried to explain the best way I could. Um, you have my overclocking profile on the, on the description of the video, so you just need to go there, uh, download my overclocking profile, go here to the load profile, and load your profile. In this case, I will put the safe profile, which is the 2000 boost, okay, which will boost around 90 50 megahertz. Um, I'll put the safe one, and for example, the best one which I have here for my card, of course, is 2050 millivolts with 1.140 millivolts, okay. 
As for the, um, the VRAM, like I said before, 940 instead of 930 because my card can do it. Like I said, once again, go to the description, download my settings if you want. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share it because it really helps a lot. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's actually it. Um, and well, if you have any kind of doubts, just go to the comment section, leave a comment there, and I will try to answer as fast as possible. Thanks one more time and see you in the next video.